So I'll talk about the logistics of that in a moment. Okay, so welcome to Chem 2300 or Chem 2305. As of yesterday, there was nobody registered in Chem 2305. Or, yes, yes, that's the, that's the course code number. So 2300 is organic introductory organic chemistry with lab. Uh, some of you have previous lab credit, we'll get into that, but you're all registered in the, the with lab one. And if I click a button, something should happen. There we go. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I'm gonna talk a little bit about me because uh, it's my favorite subject. Then I'm gonna talk about my second favorite subject, which is organic chemistry. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what that is. Um, I'm gonna make a half-hearted attempt to try and convince you that you should be learning organic chemistry for bigger reasons other than that it's just really, really cool. Um, I just believe it's really, really cool. And talk a little bit about some of the details in the syllabus. Um, the syllabus is the syllabus. The syllabus already has an error, and I will talk about the error in the syllabus, and I will update it because the final syllabus doesn't need to go up till a week after class starts. Uh, so thank you to somebody who pointed out that I can't count, um, which is why I'm an organic chemist. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the recipe for success in organic chemistry. I, so I'm a Reddit user, probably an awful lot of you are, and I noted on Reddit a few I don't know, it was a month or so ago, uh, somebody was asking about this class and somebody else pointed out, well, you know, it's really, really good if you get Jim Green. And if you get Trant, well, he's not the destroyer of worlds that some people make him out to be, but it's, it's still harder. And, you know, first of all, it's nice to be compared to a god. But secondly, I think that that's kind of true. I, I take that as a, as a fair criticism. And what I'm going to say is I'm not, I don't put down a recipe for success saying, hey, this is, this, these are some nice ideas that, you know, if you feel like it, you can do it. Um, it is, if you feel like it, you can do it. Uh, but I would say that students who more or less, you know, follow a plan like this tend to do extremely well. And students who don't tend to not do all that well. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why, and I'll try and convince you why, and we'll go with that. Um, my end goal for this course is I got to hand out uh, 365 A pluses. That's what I really want to do and defend it to my dean and say they just were the best class ever. Um, the last time I did this, that was not the result. So a bit about me. Um, I changed my undergrad major five times because I just couldn't figure out what the hell I wanted to do with my life. And I finally settled on a degree in medicinal chemistry. Um, I still got down in four years but it was, what grabbed me was, actually it wasn't this course, it was the, the next one, the winter course. Um, I hated this course. Uh, I had this guy who thought that the, the best thing that you should do is memorize lists of tables and that that was organic chemistry, was memorizing, you know, pairs of numbers and letters. Um, I did not want anything to do with that course after that. I, but when I took my second organic chemistry class, um, I was taught by this, well, to me, he seemed like a really old guy. Uh, now, now I guess he doesn't seem so old, but he was, you know, 70-ish. Um, and he just taught it and sort of showed me that it was puzzle solving and I could get a career puzzle solving and I could spend the rest of my life puzzle solving every day. And I went, holy shit, somebody will actually pay me to do that. Uh, and I've never really looked back. So it was about three or four lectures in and it was just, boom, that was what I was going to do with the rest of my life. So dropped all my thoughts of going to med school and dealing with blood because I don't deal with blood very well. Um, so I stayed on because my wife was living in Ottawa. She wasn't my wife yet because I was really young, but stayed on to my PhD at Ottawa, which just happened to turn out to be something really good. And it, uh, I did it in organic chemistry and in bioorganic chemistry, which is basically a fancy way of saying I made sugars and amino acids and stuff. Um, my PhD, what I it's actually really, really cool. We were designing molecules that bind to ice crystals so you can freeze organs. And so the big problem with organ transplantation isn't a shortage of organs. We've got lots of organs. The problem is uh, timing because you need to get the organ out of somebody and into somebody else in a very, very short period of time. Uh, it would be a whole lot better if we could actually just kind of, you know, uh, if I die in a motorcycle accident tonight, I don't have a motorcycle, so it's unlikely and it's quarantine, so I'm not going anywhere. But if I were to die in a motorcycle accident tonight, um, except for my liver, because of all the alcohol, every other part of my organs are actually in pretty good shape. And it'd be good if they could harvest those, stick them into deep freeze, 
And then when an organ match donor shows up in Calgary in two or three years time and needs my heart, they can say, hey, we got this perfect match of a heart. We're going to thaw it for you and stick, you, stick it in you. We would basically get rid of the organ waiting lists overnight. Um, of course, this isn't a solved problem. If you freeze something, uh, it dies. So we were working on molecules that kind of overcame this, and we were actually able to freeze a rat ovary, like take a rat ovary out of a rat, uh, freeze the ovary, and then thaw it, and then stick it back in a rat, and the rat had kids, which is really cool. So we're making progress towards this, and I really think that you know maybe in 20 years' time, uh, we will be you know, solving the problem of organ transplantation, which would be freaking amazing. So I did that for four and a half years. And then I went to Brock and Western where I did, at Brock I did making molecules for the sake of making molecules because people who did that for a living made fun of me because I wasn't quite doing that in my PhD and they're like, you're not making real molecules. So I went to make the real molecules. So I made puffer fish toxin. Um, there is absolutely no point to make puffer fish toxin. The, the cost of the stuff that we made is astronomical and completely unaffordable and useless, and then it kills you. Uh, there's a lot easier ways to kill people. So it's, but we showed we could, and we showed that we could do it faster and quicker than anybody else. And so we won the great pissing contest that is making molecules. So I did that for a year and a half, and then I went to Western where I made plastics. Actually, I was making, I was sticking drugs into plastics and sticking them on arterial stents so we can put them into people who need open heart surgery. And the idea there is that when somebody's going in and putting a stent in, and you might know what stents are, they look like giant balloons and they blow up and they hold the artery open. The problem is the artery starts, well, you hurt the artery and it scars. And what does tissue that's scarred do? Well, it grows in and it kind of then the artery again. So you aren't really any further ahead. So what we do is we're, we added a drug into the coating and we made it very, very slow release because we locked it in there chemically and it prevents the cells from closing back over the artery. So it keeps the artery open. Uh, that got patented, bought by the biggest stent maker in the world who then buried the patent because it competed with their current clinical tools. Um, they are bringing it to market, but they're just not rushing it. And I also played around with immunology. I was trying to look at how molecules activate the immune system, uh, which is something I'm still really fascinated about. I, I love the immune system. I don't understand it at all, but I really, really love it. And I started playing around with molecules that kind of make their own structures and they all kind of join together spontaneously and make shapes, which is really cool. And then I came here and that's my current logo that we got one of our undergraduate students to do. Uh, not actually in my group, but in the University of Windsor. And I'm really proud of it because it's a nice logo. We have a nice website too. Uh, as far as academic websites go, I think it's pretty good. There's nothing about teaching on there though. And then, so what's my research here? Well, I'm, I'm interested in, I'm interested in drugs and fire, which is why I'm an organic chemist. Most organic chemists are either interested in drugs or fire or both. Uh, I like both. And normally I use both drugs and fire in these lectures, but they're remote and I don't want to set fire to my home office. And um, well, all the drugs need to stay in locked drawers on campus and so I can't bring them home, which is too bad. So I want to make, chem do chemistry to do something useful. And that's what I'm interested in. So I'm interested in making new types of molecules and designing new ways to make molecules so that we can affect and solve some unsolved problem in biology, whether it be cancer or autoimmune disease or, um, magical disappearing plastics, which is something I'm really interested in. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. So what I'm, I am is I'm a user of organic chemistry. Um, fundamentally, if you held a gun to my head and said, what do I do? It's, it's organic chemistry and it's at the center of everything I do. And it allows us to do so many different things. It allows us to look at organ freezing. It allows us to make new, better biomedical devices. And of course, it's driving all pharma, uh, pharmaceutical science and designing new drugs. And clicking a button clearly does nothing. Uh, clicking, them. there we go, okay. So this is a blank slide. Uh, I'm Normally what I do here is I say, what is organic chemistry? And I try and have people populate the slide. And if I've been thinking enough, I would have done like some sort of, you know, word cloud thing and maybe I'll do that another time. Um, and I point at people in the audience and I am not gonna point at people in the audience because I have 90 faces staring back at me, or well, actually, no, I've got like six faces staring back at me and 90 black walls. Um, 
I'm going to skip this and I'm going to try and figure out how to be a lot more, I don't want to be interactive for the sake of being interactive because that's really lame and pathetic, but we're, I'm going to try and figure out some ways to do that. Uh, some of the things features that Zoom has are breakout rooms. We might use that going forward. Um, but I really need to think about whether that's useful because sometimes, you know, there's such a movement right now in teaching to use the interactive tools and make sure that that's happening. And then I don't know how useful they are. I don't know how much you guys like them. I used to kind of think they were all really gimmicky as a student. And it's like, yeah, this is bullshit. Just move on, stop wasting my time. So I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious of them. So uh, I just talked a little bit about what I think organic chemistry is. It's, I think it's the, the study of carbon related molecules. Yeah, you can. Okay, thanks, Hader. Yes, you can. Actually, that's true. You can annotate using Zoom. Fuck, why didn't I think of that? Sorry, I swear during lectures, and they're all going to be on the recordings, and that's just going to happen. I, I try and keep it down. Um, there's up here, there's an annotate button. You can select text, and you can write. <laughs> something really obscene. Try not to write something that's really obscene. I'd, I'd have to delete it and then it, it tells me who's doing it too and I'd have to track them down. Um, okay, we're having a lot of fun with this. You, you can draw, but you can actually just select text and type too, that is an option. Okay, we really want to draw. Oh, I know where that one's going. Yo, chill on the hard R, bro. Yeah, there's a lot of love. Okay, this is good. Nice job, okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here. <laughs> there we go. Um, so what 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 I think we're studying in this class is we're studying the three uh, we're studying the interactions of molecules that have carbon hydrogen bonds. That is organic chemistry. Anything with CH in it. Uh, we're going to add a lot more complexity to that, of course, and there actually are going to be a few exceptions, but for the most part, it's the chemistry of those molecules. Originally, the name comes from the idea that this was living chemistry. Shit, that's going to be blocking your view, because that's how Zoom works, and where is my mouse? There it is. Um, you used to be thinking of living chemistry, so there's like dead chemistry, and then there's chemistry of stuff from life, and that was the organic. And there was this thought that you can't get this chemistry from that chemistry. Like the two just don't mix because there's, there's something ineffable to life that needs to go into the chemistry. And that's, I'm, I don't know, maybe depending on your religious viewpoint, there is something ineffable to life, but definitely it doesn't go into the chemistry. The chemistry is purely material and chemist molecules are molecules, atoms are atoms. And I would agree with that. Okay. I would ask that, in general, um, we don't write over the slides. <laughs> this is a good one for that. But in general, please don't. Oh shit, I gotta, I gotta effing delete all of that. And my mouse is doing its thing. The problem is I have a tablet hooked up and it thinks that my, my tablet is hooked up and it's not. And so it's, I, there we go, annotate, clear all drawings, go. Okay, so why study? Um, lots of reasons. Depending where your careers are taking you, this really does cover, everything around us is built from organic molecules. So if we're talking about the energy industry, uh, we're just south of Chemical Valley, right up near Sarnia. Um, lots of great jobs up there. And they're working, of course, in refining gas and oil that's coming in from the, the tar sands. All sorts of ethical issues with that, all sorts of environmental issues with that. We need to move away from that, completely agree. Right now, our economy is built on oil. And if we stop using oil tomorrow, uh, it's gonna be bad. So this is gonna keep going for a while. Um, almost all of the molecules that we work with, all the things that come in bottles are coming from oil, um, uh, oil products, 
like oil starting materials. And I've got like, a, I've obviously selected something from those. There we go. Um, this of course gets me a lot more excited, our drugs. So you've got, you know, illicit drugs, legal drugs, drugs that are kind of in between because that's kind of an arbitrary, well, the laws, I guess the laws aren't arbitrary, but it kind of is. Um, but stuff that messes with the way our bodies work. And I'm particularly interested in making these kinds of molecules. They're much more complex than hydrocarbons. Um, you've got much more interesting shapes and there's a lot more ways to vary it. And you vary little things and it completely changes how the drug works. And we can get into stories about that because I've got lots of them, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And this is where most of my focus is. Um, we're also looking sort of at met, highly medical applications that aren't pharmaceutical. So what's becoming increasingly common is a lot of drugs aren't soluble in water, but we need to get them into your blood because they can go the right places. So what do you do? You stick them in an oil droplet. That's essentially what you do. Uh, and we're trying to make smarter oil droplets. Like I'm trying to make really smart oil droplets that go exactly where you want them to go and then only degrade at the spot where they're supposed to. Um, but essentially they're still oil droplets. So we need to make those out of organic molecules. Uh, all MRI and PET imaging agents are these kind of complex, you have a metal in there that's providing high contrast. And then you have these ligands that make sure the metal doesn't change oxidation state. Because otherwise, if, the, if gadolinium is just floating around in water, it starts uh, agglomerating into a gadolinium solid and it's not going to the right spots and behaving itself properly. So we need to make these complex organic frameworks around it to hold it in place. Um, this is something that we're, I'm actually getting into, which I'm, I, I, I still can't believe we can do this, which is we can basically 3D print cells. Um, we're actually going to start printing brains, which is just awesome. Like that's just freaking mind blowing. And the idea is that you have to print this scaffold around the cells because the cells, if you ever try and culture, I, I guess you haven't done a lot of tissue culture, but if you're starting to do that, cells like lying in 2D, they like lying in a flat level. So if we're trying to move them into 3D scaffolds, then we need to print something that they can attach themselves to. And so these are all organic molecules. Um, the biggest effect that chemistry has on your life is plastic. I really can't imagine life without plastic and it is entirely from the chemical industry. So uh, we got these boring old plastics like styrofoam cups and you know, the national uniform of living in the United States and your containers to hold your bleach. So the, all these types of compounds are derived from oil-based things and we use chemistry to make them. And what we're doing now, and again, something I'm really excited about is moving away from these more traditional plastics and towards these greener plastics, these more sustainable plastics. Um, and so what we're seeing now are the biodegradable polymers. So Loblaws, all the green bags that you get there now at Zares and Superstore or whatever, uh, they're made out of uh, polylactic acid and so they degrade in the landfill. The enzymes will chew them up. So unlike the old bags that were polyethylene that will be there till you know, the sun dies, these will degrade if they can get air to them so the bacteria can live uh, in a few years. And they seem to have solved the problem with them having lots of holes. They seem to have fewer holes now, which is better for a cat litter for all the cats. I don't have that many cats, I just have two cats, but sometimes it seems like a lot more than that. And then we're moving towards these kind of greener solvents. So most of the solvents we use are derived from diesel, basically, it's basically diesel. And we're moving towards these things called ionic liquids. The nice thing about them is they're easy to recover, they're really high boiling point, and they don't evaporate. So they don't get up there into the atmosphere, they don't cause any problems, they don't cause any health problems. Um, but they dissolve things really nicely. So I think those are all things where organic chemistry matters. I think what I want to be convincing you guys, it's going to take a little while. I'm not going to convince you in the first few lectures that, that this is, you know, a puzzle solving platform and it's a way to kind of think about new problems and a new way of thinking about problems. And that's both the joy and the absolute panic of this material. So what are you gonna get from this course? You're gonna get a fundamental understanding of how organic chemistry works. We're gonna talk a lot about the basic concepts. I'm constantly telling my grad students, you know, you should really just attend my, my intro organic class. Uh, you'll learn everything you need to know about organic chemistry. Everything else after this is bells and whistles. We're gonna be talking about all the fundamental things that we need to understand. 
you know what? Every single course talks about this. They talk about their language and all that. What I mean by this is that what you have learned to date, all of your high school courses, all of your first year university courses, uh, mostly have built upon things that you've seen previously. Like a first year university physics class really builds upon grade 12 physics, or which builds upon grade 11 physics, which builds upon whenever they teach science in high school now. Um, like there's a clear progression of knowledge that you're scaffolding on top of stuff that you previously understand, things you've previously seen. We're about to take a hard right turn about four lectures from now, and you're going to start seeing things and working with things where you don't really have any previous experience to build upon with that. And that's what makes this course so challenging. So you're going to start thinking a little bit differently and finding a new way of doing it. Sort of like if you had never taken math before, and now we are starting to do math. It's like, what the hell are all these numbers? This is, a lot of you are here because um, uh, that one, professional school. Uh, you know, I'd say, I can look up the health and biomedical student populations class, but I don't really need to. It's probably about 70% of you. And the, the med school dreams are there and that's great. Um, and I know a, a lot of you, you're taking this class because you have to, like that's the honest reason for why you're here. But what we're hoping to do is that we do find some new ways to think critic, do some critical problem solving. And by doing that, just, you know, play with that muscle a little bit and practice it. And hopefully that spills over into other things you're doing. And different John, uh, learn to think critically about new problems. So you're gonna see things you've never seen before and you're gonna be thinking and it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be stressful and it's gonna be upsetting and all the emotions. So how are we doing? Okay, we got a half an hour. So the required text is Ogilvy Organic Chemistry First Edition Nelson. I'm saying required. Uh, normally I don't require a text. I don't believe in forcing people to use something. The reason I'm requiring it this year is we're remote and I've decided not to do midterms. The reason for not doing midterms is because I can't grade them fairly. I can't issue them to you fairly. Um, and we can't, we can't really handle them properly without a humongous use of resources, which we're gonna throw at the final. But what we're gonna do instead then is we're gonna have graded, I'm, I'm really sorry for this, I, I, I can't apologize enough. We're gonna have graded online assignments using the learning management software. And I freaking hate it. I despise it so much, but I don't really see a good way around it because what I don't want us to have is a 75% final exam. I actually don't think I'm allowed to do that. Um, so we're moving some of the grade, what we're trying to do is find different ways to move the grade off the final. Um, there's a solution manual, it's optional. Uh, the lab manual and all that's being gonna be posted to Blackboard. So the text itself is not required. You do not need to buy the text. You do need to buy Mobius. And I feel like I'm like, part of like an extortion ring here saying you, you gotta buy this licensed software thing. It's, it's 80 bucks, hand over your money. And again, normally would not do this, but don't want a 75% final. Not allowed to have a 75% final. As I say here, all notes will be posted on Blackboard following the lectures. All videos of these lectures will be posted to the YouTube channel, which is in the syllabus following the lectures. Um, there is nothing interesting on that YouTube channel except organic chemistry to lectures it's not going to be a bestseller. So I'm grabbing a couple of slides. I'm actually going to post this online. So when you buy Mobius, each, every copy of Ogilvy sold at our bookstore is bought with the Mobius code. I also included a link to just buy the Mobius code, which is a little bit cheaper. It's 80 bucks versus 112 bucks. 112 bucks gets you the code and the hardcover textbook. 80 bucks just gets you the code and sort of an ebook that goes with it, which to the best of my knowledge, looks like it's basically a more or less complete version of the hardcover. So if you're like, you're never gonna crack open the hardcover, just go with the ebook version, save yourself 30 bucks. If you like books uh, and you, you need hardcovers, 111 bucks, I'm sorry. I know like on the big scheme of things, these aren't that expensive compared to some of the prices out there, but still irritating. Um, you do need that code. You, so this is, when you do it, you'll, 
Uh, the link will be here. I'll be posting this, so you'll be able to click on that. Uh, you'll get a window like this, retrieve your student access to Mobius. And what you need to do is you need to enter this access code. This is, oops, this is our access code for our course. Um, and they conveniently tell you that there are ways to buy it underneath. Then you're going to enter your name and all that fun stuff. And you're going to enter a redemption code because you will have bought the textbook. Uh, if you haven't bought the textbook, you can buy it here live. And you get, uh, it's a one year contract for this, or is it eight months? Cause it's maybe valid until April 30th. It's just, um, yeah, I'm, again, I'm sorry. They'll confirm that your transcript, uh, that you, you've given them their money or you have, you know, registered your code and you're good. So I'm going to post the whole slide with uh, the whole slideshow that we got from Top Hat on how to give them money. They're very, very good and very, very clear about how to give them money. So the evaluation lab 25%. Oh shit, this is not right. Okay, ignore all this. This is wrong. I'm going to skip that because it's right here. I just didn't delete that slide. Okay, so talking about attendance, you can attend or not attend these lectures. I'm going to talk about why I think you sh you know what, it doesn't matter if you attend live, you can do them not live. If you're live, theoretically, we can, yeah, uh, I can follow the chat if I actually looked over at the chat where I'm currently looking over at the chat. Um, someone buy the textbook and send pics. Will you be following the textbook in regards to, so the, yes. So Amy, yeah, I, I'm actually looking at this right now. You've, we've got, I'm going, going to go back about six minutes. Uh, there are discords and reddits and okay, that's fine. Um, I will be following a textbook in the syllabus that actually tells you the lineup of the course material that we're covering and what chapter it's in. Uh, so we're mostly going to be following that. I am going to be assigning recommended problems, but it's never wrong to do almost all the problems. Uh, three grade assignments will be delivered through Mobius. That is correct. So the breakdown for this is 24%. Um, so Jenna, I will try and post PowerPoints when I'm using them. I generally don't use PowerPoints. It's only a handful of slides, ones at the beginning that are gonna do that. Um, so what I recommend you do is actually take notes on the side and I'm gonna to get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, there's this mix of things aimed that are serious questions and then things that are not serious questions, which is great. Uh, it, it's just, it, this is good. Okay, um, I, when I use a PowerPoint slot, PowerPoint presentation, I will post them ahead of time. Okay, so 24% is gonna be tutorial quizzes. These are in-lab uh, quizzes. So the way the lab works is you have three hours in the lab. So an hour and a half of that, you are going to be doing computational chemistry. We are not trying to do some stupid video recorded thing with the lab. We thought about it. We actually considered a whole bunch of options. Um, some of them we thought were really, really fun, uh, but then decided that it was just too dangerous. And some we just thought were just not going to work and we're going to be uh, shit shows more so than anything else. So what we leaned into deciding is, look, the whole point of a lab is to complement the course, teach you something. And in the organic chemistry lab, we want you to get your hands wet and dirty and actually doing something. Um, that's not possible. So there's no point in you like doing some sort of practical experimental thing where we give you a data set and you watch a video of people collecting it that it just, it, it's silly. It, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna watch the videos. I wouldn't watch the videos. Um, nobody cares. So what we're doing instead is we're focusing on using computer simulations to do uh, some modeling of the chemistry. You have an hour and a half to do that. We only have a given number of um, licenses on this. We got 17 licenses. Our labs have 17 people in them you are going to have that hour and a half to do it because all the rest of the time that that's booked up with another lab group. So you can't make this up. You need to be on time for the labs. You want to make sure you're on time for the labs because it's bad if you're not. Uh, the other hour and a half is going to be a tutorial taught by one of the GAs with a short little quiz at the end. These quizzes are very straightforward. You attend, you should be cleaning up pretty high marks on that. 
This first one is the orientation assignment, 2%. Um, the three graded assignments are valued at 15% total, so 5% a piece. Uh, we're going to do a, sci a science communication thing just because I don't want everything on the final and I think it would be kind of fun, which leaves us with a 30% final. If you're in 2305, which none of you are, this would be the grade up. Now, for those of you with previous lab credit, you're excused both of these because they happen during the lab. So 48, 50% of your mark is going to suddenly disappear. But your previous lab, but that's way too much mark to put on your previous lab credit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give you 25%. Like normally the lab is worth 25%. So your previous lab credit will be 25% of the mark. The remaining 75% will be these guys rebalanced. So we're not going to, those of you who had really good lab marks, unfortunately, it's not going to be 50% of your grade. Um, but you're not going to have to try and figure out how to do the tutorials. So we're going to make sure we move you off of that. Uh, that's all written out down here. Um, yeah, I think Faza it might be that. It might be that you have 20 minutes for the quiz. So you have like, um, uh, take 90 minutes, subtract 20. So 70 minutes for the tutorial, 20 minutes for the quiz. So cheating, Cheating is a scholastic offense. The, the lab GAs don't have that many to mark. They're looking through these pretty carefully. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say don't cheat. And if we catch you, we're gonna throw the book at you. That's what we've been told to do this time is the entire book and uh, take it up to the Dean immediately. Um, and I really don't wanna do that. So don't just, just don't. Um, you know, every year under normal circumstance, you know, in a class of about 240 students, five students go up. Um, and it varies between getting a zero on the class, uh, if we can't completely prove it, to expulsion from the program. And there's always one or two expulsions. And I do not, it's going to be tempting. I don't want to expel anybody. And don't, please don't make me do that. It's freaking miserable for me. It's basically going to end everything for you um, in Ontario. Uh, you can go outside of Ontario for university, but please don't. And the, the big thing is all those, the vast majority of you who are going to be doing this fairly get screwed because of the people cheating, because they're basically devaluing all the work you're doing. Um, this statement is that it, you you know the university statements, you know the university policies on plagiarism. I don't need to repeat them here. You have gone over them multiple times. On a better note, uh, we have we are going to have tutorials scheduled once a week. These are not the lab tutorials. These are kind of discussion groups where a GA is going to be available to go through problems, um, to discuss anything that you have that you really want to have a different viewpoint on because you're like, this track guy's not making any freaking sense. The textbook doesn't make sense. I'm gonna go ask a GA about this. Yes, it's still three hours, Jenna. It's just, we need, I, the, the lab is an hour and a half. The other one's an hour and a half. We're probably not running two hours and 50 minutes on this because we, you might finish five minutes early, but expect the whole three hours because we are gonna divide it 1.5, 1.5. And 1.5 is tutorial with the quiz included. And it needs to end on time so that those people can go do the computational side next. And so that the people coming off the computational side can come into the tutorial. Okay. Um, conduct, Th these are the, I, I left these in because they're kind of funny now. Uh, like, so you don't, you can do whatever you want in your own house. I, I really could not care less. If you're muted and your mic is off, I have no idea. Um, if, if, what I do want to highlight, though, is the sickness and other problems. If you are in a position where you're going to be sick, where you have a health issue, where you have a family responsibility, where something comes up that's going to impact your performance, tell me in advance of the evaluation, right? So if you're going to miss a lab, you know you're going to miss a lab because, you know, family members come down with COVID. You've come down with COVID. You've come down with something that isn't COVID. Um, then... I let me know because then we can arrange something after the fact is always a lot more, a lot more difficult and needs documentation, all sorts of other shit. If you tell me in advance, we can arrange something informally and we can get this going. So 
let me know if you're going to have a short-term illness. If you're developing something long-term that's looking like it's going to impact your performance over the entire course, we can arrange alternate accommodations and we can run with that. Um, I want to be as flexible as I can. This term is going to suck for all of us. So let's try and make it as unsucky as possible. So um, what I want to talk about for a recipe for success. So how this is generally going to work, um, you don't need to come to class because I'm going to post live videos. What I'm hoping to do is talk to you guys um, through the chat channel. I'm going to try and keep it open in front of me on my notes page and stuff. Um, and so I can interact. So if you have something that comes up, a question that comes up, if you got that question, there are 340 people in this class, a dozen other people have that question. I, I need to hear it, especially because I don't see the feedback. I can't look in four places at once. So I'm going to have trouble watching the handful of faces that are, are on video. And, you know, most of you guys have partially dazed out and aren't looking at the screen anyways. And you're looking at something else, which is all cool. I, I don't care. Yeah. Hi, Kyra. Um, but the, I'm not, I'm not getting a lot of visual feedback on that. So I'm not really going to know when I've gone off in some weird ass direction and lost people. Um, chat window is yours to say, wait a second, I, you have lost me. It's useful. If you're lost, somebody else is lost. Take one for the team. Uh, you're not going to look stupid. The next thing I'm going to, and so the next thing I'm going to say is going to seem absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to say, write the notes. So I'm going to post the PowerPoints when I'm using PowerPoints onto the Blackboard ahead of time. You'll have them. Great. Uh, after the first couple of weeks, um, I'm going to be drifting hard away from the PowerPoints. Uh, the con no, the computational assignments are not live. And um, Spartan is going to be discussed entirely in the lab stuff. So they're, they've actually built that into the, uh, into the lab orientation time. So you're going to get a really detailed walkthrough on Spartan. Um, outside of the lab periods, you can often log into the license and play around with it a little bit too. Um, but just during those, the labs are every single day, Monday through Friday from uh, noon till 10, I think basically covers it. So yeah, the first lab is just, there's an orientation lab first. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear the, the uh, those of you who are overseas, this is particularly challenging. Um, you're all, I guess you're all used to being night owls now for doing courses here. If you're, you don't need to attend these live, that's why I'm going to record these. Uh, but you can't then ask questions, I guess, but you can ask me questions at other times. What I'm saying is write the notes because I'm going to start writing on a tablet. I'm going to use one note. It's going to zoom. You're going to see my screen and I'm going to be writing things down. You're going to have those. So why do you need to write them? A lot of this is in your hands. I'd say the number one reason students struggle with this course is they think, yeah, I know this stuff. I've read the notes, read the textbook. I get it. I get it. I get it. Then they run into problems like I don't get it. And, um, and, that, and then it goes south quickly because then your confidence gets hit and then you enter the next problem you don't know how to do and then boom, everything just collapses and you're in a wailing pile of weeping on the floor. It's very sad. So the first thing to do is write, follow along, get this into your hands. Think about drawing these things. You need to do a lot of drawing. I am sure that there are, okay, ratio wise, by statistical chance, there are two of you in this class who are naturals. You're freaking naturals, you're freaks of nature. This stuff is just gonna make absolutely inherent sense to you. I'm gonna discuss it once and you're gonna go like, yeah, of course, like how could it be any other way? Um, I'm not one of those people and I have not met very many of those people. Um, the rest of us struggle and it's, it's tough. You are going to need to draw a lot and it's best to draw it and follow along in class because I'm gonna draw the, I'm gonna draw like there's Temporal stuff. And I guess you know the videos, but if you're attending class, you're not going to want to watch the video again normally. Uh, so if you just have the static notes, everything is static. And static doesn't give you time differentiation uh, as things go and as, as arrows or things are drawn. So I strongly suggest that it's just like in class, just like if this was on a freaking blackboard instead of on a permanently pasted thing that I'm going to upload to the web website, pretend it's going to disappear 
draw and practice drawing. Now, of course, if you get behind, it's not the end of the world because you can go back and catch it up. But I, I can't, I can't say this strongly enough. At the end of the year, I always get a few students coming back to me and saying, um, I'm really glad I drew this stuff all the way through class. It, it, this stuff all made perfect sense and I realized where I was having the problems. I always have a few that come to me and say, you know, once I started doing that, it really made a lot more sense. So I'm saying this now, I'm emphasizing it now, and I still know that a huge chunk of you will ignore me. Um, please, please be in a group that doesn't. Uh, again, you might be a natural, you might be one of the few freaks of nature who can just do this naturally. You're probably not. Um, that's really the most important thing. I, I think that is, well, the second most important thing. Uh, participate in class. What I mean by that is if you have questions, ask them. So um, how are the lab tutorial quizzes done? I think the lab tutorial quizzes are going to be done on Blackboard. Um, that's going to be filled in uh, from the lab side. The lab side is actually being run a little bit separate from the lecture. I'm handing it off to my colleague, Dr. Icorn. Um, yeah, of course you can go grab a drink. Go, um, well, actually, if you have a drink for everyone. <laughs> um, so be assigning um, questions both directly from the textbook for practice, and I will also be posting assignments that I write that are kind of like my exam, and those are also for practice. Uh, they're not graded. Um, I'll also be recommending questions on Mobius. There's a whole bank of things on Mobius. You can play around with tons of questions. So you can do as many practice questions as you want. Uh, and what I strongly recommend is you do as many as you freaking can. Like ideally what you do is you run, there's only one exam. So yeah, the final's cumulative. Um, this is gonna be more fun than I thought. Then do as many problems as you can. I think this is my personal thing. Um, you know, write the notes, then stick them aside and forget about them and just do problems and go back to the notes when you're stuck on a problem, you're staring at going, I have no clue what the hell I'm looking at. Then you go back to the textbook, you go back to the notes, you go back to the lecture and try and figure out how to, how to address that problem. But the work here isn't reading over your notes. That's not the studying you want to do. The exam is not going to be, give me a definition of X or Y. The exam is going to be, here's a problem, solve it. Here's a problem, solve it. Think of it kind of like a mathematics thing. No one asks you, okay, some really weird teachers ask you to define stuff in math. But for the most part, it's here's a problem, solve it. That's what this exam is going to be. I can, I don't think I've ever asked a definition problem and I'm not going to start. So it's going to be new iterations of things that you have seen and asking you to use your knowledge and use the problem solving things and synthesize different parts of knowledge for that. Um, again, that's where we get onto this focus on understanding the concepts, not just memorizing examples. The examples will get you into trouble. Um, like, go ahead. If, if, if you're learning to understand a concept involves memorizing an example, go freaking nuts and do it. Um, if we only purchase Mobius, then what do we enter for the redemption code? Um, the redemption code is what you get from Mobius. So when you purchase Mobius, you will get the code and you will use that code. Um, Burhan's having drinks at his place. Uh, is the online women's training on Blackboard? It's the same women's training you completed first year. Um, we'll make sure that it's available if it's part of this, yeah. Yeah, there you go. They email you the code if you buy Mobius online. Um, and take advantage of my office hours, which are not on the next slide. They're uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They're on one of these slides, I promise. And they're on this Zoom channel. And I just basically sit there lonely staring at my screen if nobody shows up. I, I reserve that time for you guys. Um, why come to class? Why, okay, so why attend the lectures? Why look at the videos afterwards if you don't come to class live? Uh, I write the exam. So what I like to focus on is probably relevant. <laughs> um, it's a reinforcement of concepts you read in the text, alternate explanations. Again, I, I know that any, any way I explain something, I will work, will work for about 70% of you. And if I explain it a different way, I will work for a different 70% of you. I will not be able to explain something that will work for 100% of the people. And I can't go over it time and time again because we have a curriculum to cover and we have a limited amount of time. 
Um, in office hours, I can approach things from multiple different angles, normally find something that works. But you might find that these classes are not working for you and that what's working for you is doing the problems and reading the textbook. Or what's working for you is a specific GA's tutorials. Or what's working for you is a different textbook or Khan Academy or your best friend Bob. Like I, what you do you and you learn this the way you want to learn this. I am going to do my best to reach as many people as I possibly can, but it's different for absolutely everybody. And what works for one person is not going to work for somebody else. So this is an, an, one of your ways to cover the material uh, that you're going to be evaluated on. I like to think that I emphasize the material that's relevant to you because I write the exam, uh, information on tests and exams because I write the exam, but that's singular. And I will work through basically practice solving problems. A lot of the time you're going to see a problem that you've never seen before. It's sometimes useful to have seen somebody work through that problem before. Um, Spartan is going to be explained in the lab orientation. Spartan is the computational software. And they're going to take you through sort of how basically to use it uh, in that orientation, play around with it. The first lab is very gentle. Um, lecture ends in five minutes because we started late. Um, so they, you know what, a lot of this isn't as relevant. Um, I try to be not boring. I, I really try. It's just like the first thing I try and do. Um, everything else, please interact if you can through the chat channel where I'm going to try and, you know, create some of these slides where we can, you know, draw things on it and talk. Um, if you have a tablet with a stylus on it, that's great for exchanging things. That's awesome. If you don't have a tablet, there's some dirt cheap ones on Amazon for like 30 bucks. They're like drawing tablets that kind of work. Okay. Um, I've got one here. It's actually not a flaming pile of shit which is, is pretty good for 30 bucks. Um, I'll mostly be using a surface though, because it's, I, I really like the pen. Um, so that, that's a really good way to exchange things, but no, you don't have to get a tablet. If you, it, it can be easier um, and you can, you know, write things on top of things. I think it, if you're the kind of person who likes gadgets and has money to buy gadgets, then buy a gadget. Um, if you don't have money to buy gadgets, buy Mobius. And I'm really sorry about Mobius again. Um, always treat classmates with respect when they participate. So I don't want anyone making fun of anyone else for any question. I, I won't make fun of anyone for any question. Um, cause there are no really stupid questions. Um, they're just stupid people and I don't think any of you people are stupid. So the, tr just, we're going through a, uh, a chat window. I think this is going to be better. Um, I'm not going to monitor any of the discords or reddits, anything that's off the official thing I'm, I'm staying out of, just telling you right now I'm out of that. Um, so do what you need to do. Um, but if, if anyone sees evidence of, you know, cheating that people are on openly talking about on a discord or reddit, uh, GAs will probably pop in because, you know, that's what they do. And it would be good to let us know because it's devaluing the work you're doing. Um, yeah. So again, be polite. Don't be noisy during lecture. I, you can unmute if you have a question. That's fine. I'm, I'm fine with somebody, you know, calling in an oral question. That's great. Um, um, John, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, is there any way to get previous exams that you've written? You know what? I'll post some. Yeah, that's good. That's a good question, Ryan. I'll post some up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, and I'll post actually up the assignments as well. Um, pretty soon. I've actually drawn questions from the assignments for previous exams. Uh, for obvious reasons, I'm not doing that this year. This is going to be an open book exam. Um, I'll talk about the exam another day. We're just out of time. So I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Do as many practice problems as possible. Definitely do the assignments that I put up because they're going to be most similar to the exam. And you're not going to get practice on the midterms because there are no midterms. I also post uh, answer keys to my assignments. So uh, just so you have it, basic. this is basically what we're going to be covering up to about chapter 19. We're, we're missing a little bit of stuff in here. And again, my evaluations 
focus as much as possible, understanding of concepts, not memorization. This is especially true this year. Everything is open book. I assume everything is open book. It is not cheating to use an internet search engine. It is not cheating to use your textbook. It is not cheating to use your notes. It is not cheating to use lecture materials. It is cheating to ask your friend how to do the question. So you can do, as far as I'm concerned, any of the, any of the evaluation materials, you can use any written or oral resource that you can access except another person live feedback discussion that is considered cheating. Um, the one thing I do want to stre stress is that later topics rely on understanding developed in those in the first part of the class, that sentence makes no sense. We're going to be building on stuff. If you're finding that you're getting lost on something, don't think ah, it doesn't matter. It's just one module. I'm fine. You're going to get in some trouble. Um, so Sometimes something won't click completely till quite a way through the course, but sometimes um, you are going to need to work a little bit harder to make sure you're on top of something because otherwise you're going to start getting swamped by other things that you don't get. Uh, if you can't afford to get Mobius, I think you need to talk to financial aid. Um, it, it, like, what, what, so theoretically, if you don't submit any of the Mobius assignments, you lose 15% of your grade. So you can still get 85 out of 100. Um, if you're on it, like I, I would discuss that with financial aid. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, there, there are people in different, I know there are lots of people in different situations here. Um, and it would be good to discuss with them and send me an email if you honestly cannot afford to, uh, to buy it and we can take a look and see options. Um, they're not going to be good options. How much effort am I looking for in a TikTok? So what I want it to be is something that I can share. Uh, that's going to be a requirement. My, uh, my Twitter handle is at Trant Team. Um, so it needs, to ha it needs to be good enough. It's out of whatever, 6% or 5% or something. So you submit something that is about organic chemistry you're probably looking about 3%, you're, that, that's a pass. Um, if you're starting to build some, like there's some creativity in there, there's a little bit of information that's beyond the scope of the course. Mostly it will be beyond the scope of the course because when we talk about individual molecules, we're not gonna do a lot of that. Um, you're moving up towards that full 5% of the grade. And then what I'm doing is I'm reserving 20 spots for the best 20 of these versions. Uh, oh, there's a SciComm uh, assignment, um, which I think I'm going to cover next class, beginning of next class, because we're just out of time. Uh, anyway, so I'll, may I'll start with that next class. So go to office hours, um, 9 to 10 a.m. on this Zoom channel, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. By appointment, if you can't make those, send me an email. I'm going to be swamped with email, so please don't send me more emails than you need to. If you have a whole lot of questions and you're studying, Try and collate, collate them into a single email instead of sending an email every 20 seconds because um, that irritates me. I will answer emails within 24 hours. I try and go faster than that though. Um, email is the official form of communication. Yeah, exactly. Uh, email is the official form of communication for University of Windsor. That's what we will be using. If I have official statements to send, I will be sending them over email. Um, I'm not gonna spend, I, we've already kind of covered this. We, uh, what I just want to emphasize is we are doing the best we can under the circumstances. I know you guys are doing the best you can under the circumstances. Um, we're all doing the best we can. So I think we're going to keep doing that. If something is coming up where, um, something big is happening, please let me know so we can address that and try and solve that problem. Um, so again, to wrap this thing up only a little bit over time. Uh, I think, I can't say this not cheesily, I just can't. I, I, I love organic chemistry. It's the meaning of my life, along with my wife, life, wife, chemistry, chemistry doesn't rhyme with that. Um, it's awesome. I, I think this is a great way to think about solving puzzles and I like puzzles. If you actually follow along, like just, keep up with stuff, you are going to do fine. 
I've, I've never had a student who doesn't keep up with the work do badly. It just doesn't happen. The ones who do badly are the ones who do not keep up with the work. Yes, the TikToks were great. We'll talk about it next class, it's 5%. Um, and this year is unusual. Uh, we're all doing the best we can. If you do need resources, uh, the student counseling services here at the University of Windsor are bored. They want people, they are actually doing in-person meetings, uh, starting with some in-person, but they're doing most of it over the phone. Uh, and they can also point you towards other resources if, you know, people over phone or in person isn't your thing. There's all sorts of internet resources available. They're all on their website. And if you're struggling academically, the Bounce Back program is running this fall. And that's a student success program to support you uh, with the problems. Okay, that's it. And now I'm going to try and answer some of these questions. Um, ChemDraw activation code, I think you should have had an email sent to you. It is probably in your spam. So when you download it from, you should download ChemDraw from the uh, lectures over if you need to run. I'm just going to address questions. Uh, you should download from the Software Depot at the University of Windsor. When you do that, you'll be logging in. When you download it, Software Depot will automatically send you an email with some of the information uh, on your activation code and stuff like that. Um, uh, the mo molecular model set, I, it's never been graded. In previous years, you needed it for the labs. Uh, I don't know if you need it for the labs this year. I think you'll hear about that in your orientation. I strongly recommend it if you're not, if you're really, really good at 3D thinking and like sculptures your thing, you're probably fine. If you're not really, really good at 3D thinking, um, and you're probably not, I think the model kit is very, very useful. Um, when do we need to have them like they're set the latest by? I don't think there's any real rush. I, again, I'm, I'm actually, I'll, I'll come back to you about that one uh, to hear uh, and make sure that I hear from the lab side when they, if they, if they need that and when they need it by. Uh, but you can probably do a lot of that actually using computer simulation now, and you can probably get away without the kit if you need it for an evaluation, but I'll follow up with them and make sure we can get that. I know you're in, you're in contact, so I'm gonna make sure, uh, way ahead of time, so I'm gonna make sure you're, you're looked after on that. Um, okay, so the SciComm assignment will be due, it's, it's avail you can hand it in any time. Uh, it's due at the end of the term. So I think I'm not allowed an evaluation the last week of class. So I'm gonna send the, the due date is gonna be the final date I can accept evaluations. And the goal is the best 20 are going to be able to get up to 5% bonus marks on the entire course. So what this is, is it's to reward students who are like, you know, they've got some sort of crazy creative idea that they're running with and they're obviously putting a whole lot more effort into it than uh, most of us would. And I don't want to make it so that a crazy amount of effort is required for 100%. I want to make this so that, you know, you've done a little bit of independent reading, a little bit of independent research. You've had to do some sort of creative thinking and of, of any form. And I'm, I'm willing to keep this as broad as possible. Infographic, short story, um, use, like whatever your creative thing is. I'd probably stick with the infographic because I have no creative talents and that's something I could probably do. Um, TikTok video, I, I, whatever. Um, and the ones, the people who put the most effort in are obviously spending more time on this and we want to reward that. Even if it's like more on, you know, the presentation side or the artistic side, they're, they're putting quite a lot of effort into that. And we want to make sure that we recognize that. So the top 20, we are going to give extra marks to. It's just so if you're working your ass off on that, um, you're getting something for it. Um, labs on teams. No, the labs are done individually. Uh, how do we get, I'm going to just put this up so you can see what I'm looking at. How do we get the molecular set? Uh, you can buy them online. Uh, Darling models are one, but you can buy any model set. I just really like those ones. Um, I think they're great, but you can get any molecular set that's available. Uh, first Mobius assignment is going to be due. It's in a syllabus. I think it's the beginning of October. Uh, there'll be a practice Mobius assignment in September where we can figure out where all the bugs are and why it doesn't work. So you guys can practice doing it so you're not 
getting your first experience to this timed Mobius assignment um, when it's for marks. Um, yes, labs are on Microsoft Teams, but are not done in Teams. Sorry. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Um, what happens if we don't have, well, we're going to, the assignment is going to be at the end of October, uh, beginning of October. So you should buy Mobius by then. And you're going to, that's not going to be a problem. The assignments are only going to be live for 24 or 48 hours, whatever I wrote down. Um, and you're not going to be able to go back on a question. They're going to be massively randomized um, so that no two students will have exactly the same assignment. And for obvious reasons. And I'm sorry. Um, there's an app for Spartan that's super similar. Is that okay or does it have to be the software? I've just had many problems with downloading. Um, so the, for the lab, um, if you're having problems with Spartan downloading, uh, I'm going to say contact Dr. Eichhorn, um, lucky man, and we'll try and help you with that. But the, there's lots of software that allows you to play with molecules, but Spartan doesn't just allow you to play with molecules. It has a lot of computer algorithms under the hood, which are not on apps. Because um, the apps aren't charging you $1,000 a person. Can we go and pair it? The SciComm, everything else is individual. Shit. That's a really good question, Kara. I'll think about that. I think it might depend on the scope. Um, so for big, really big ambitious things, I think pairs make sense. If you're making an infographic, it's probably going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, ChemDraw, any version of ChemDraw doesn't freaking matter. You can grab one from 1996, it'll do the job. Um, yes, newly, how you can leave. Uh, yeah, the final is cumulative because there's only one full exam. So the final, the final is the entire course. It is cumulative. The course is inherently cumulative. You can't, really can't write a non-cumulative uh, example. Um, Spartan is suspicious software. That sounds typical. Um, you'll have to give it special approval, I guess. Uh, which version of Spartan? The one from the software depot, or the, the that's the one you want. Is there a link for the Spartan download? I will make sure we put one up there because that is a very good question. Uh, oh, the lab orientation. Okay, yes. Thank you, Luca. Yeah, <laughs> lab orientation sheet gives instructions on how to download Spartan. I appreciate that. And we recommend you use that. I think you do need to use the VPN generally in Spartan because we are using a site license. It is linked to the University of Windsor. So it is accepting only really the University of Windsor um, licenses. So I would download the VPN. If you don't have the VPN, you should get it. It's, it's stupid freaking easy to use. Uh, you click a button normally. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Tahira, we are going to have, do you have a Mac? Shit. Okay. Um, Send me an email to here. We're going to try and work this out. We'll figure out a way because this needs to be figured out. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. VPNs are banned. That's going to raise some problems. Okay. Well, that that's a fair accommodation. Uh, we will figure out a way to work with that. I think I've answered everyone's question. If there was before I answer questions and you have questions, I am looking at the chat window right now. And I'm only 15 minutes over, which isn't bad. Okay, uh, Lara, the um, uh, contact, you might need to contact IT services if the VPN's not working for you. Um, I don't know what the yes was for, Lara. Okay. Um, but if the VPN is not working for you, you might need to contact IT services because we do, okay, some configurations of computers have trouble with the VPN and they fixed it before we've had this issue. Yeah, um, so generally with the power, I will post the PowerPoint slides in advance. 
um, when I'm using PowerPoint slides. And so you'll be able to follow. Uh, generally, what I'll be doing is writing, and I'm not going to post that in advance because I'm going to be writing live. Um, and it should be very similar to copying down from a Blackboard, uh, except you're actually going to have this to go back at and look at again. And again, I am going to be posting this video. So if, if for whatever reason you missed something, you tuned out, you had to go run and get a drink for the entire class, then you can always go back and, and, and catch this. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Have a really good rest of the day and a good weekend. And I will see you bright and early Monday afternoon. Take care. Bye. Oops, there was a question and I closed the chat window. Yeah, Spartan's only needed for labs. Uh, there should be a Mac version. But I think the problem with the Mac version is it gets a little finicky over the VPN client. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it works better on the on the IBM. You know what? We will we'll figure this out. Uh, send me an email to her. This is not a con I think this is a conversation that we need um, uh, to do right now. Okay. Take it easy. I'm ending this really awful show right now. So have a good day. Bye. How do I stop? <laughs>